Hello, welcome to today's video. My name is John Godfrey, I'm the Cyrovision product manager at Datamine. So this is a short demonstration of some of the new functionality added to Cyrovision in the last major release, Cyrovision 6.0. Uh, and what I want to show you is two major things. One is the the ability to work with large uh, 3D models uh, to merge multiple 3D mosaics into one single model for analysis. And the second thing I want to show you is how quick and easy it is to use the slope stability analysis tool, which automatically uh, detects wedges and polyhedral blocks, toppling hazards and all types of unstable features uh, that can be present in the rock wall. Okay, so first topic. To work with large 3D mosaics, uh, this is a new tool which has been added into Cyrovision 6. In my Project Explorer here, I have two large mosaics, each of about 12 to 13 uh, composite 3D images. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to take both those mosaics, each mosaic is about half of the open pit image I showed you earlier, and I want to merge those together uh, so that I can analyze all the structure in the pit uh, in my, my slope stability analysis. So to do that, we go to the Tools menu and select Merge Image Files function. Here we add the mosaics that we want to merge together into a single file, so hit Add Images left control click to select multiple files and here we have uh, the two mosaics uh, the file size at the moment is 430 megabytes and 229 um, so the problem being that if you merge many mosaics together into one single file you can end up with a very large file many gigabytes and this can slow down uh, graphical performance of the software. Um, so what we've done is add a reduction factor function so I can reduce each component mosaic by different factors uh, between 1 to 10. So in this case I'm going to reduce both mosaics by a factor of 6 and as I do that the resultant file size is now 12 megabytes and 6.3 megabytes. So we have uh, we've gone from 450 megabyte sorry, 650 megabyte file to an 18 megabyte file. Now this is fine because I've already mapped my structures on the mosaics, uh, which means the structures have been mapped on the full resolution wireframe. So the accuracy of those structures is is fully uh, on the 100% resolution. Because I'm reducing the resolution now, this simply reduces the, the, the image resolution and it will not affect the mapping accuracy of the structures or the resultant analysis work. So. I've got a f output file size of 18 megabytes, so hit mer merge images, uh, enter name, demo merge, save that, hit open, and here we have our merge mosaic. This is 18 megabyte 3D image of the whole pit. So moving on to the second topic uh, for this video is to show you how quickly and easily we can run slope stability analysis on all the structures in this 3D model of the pit. Um, so to begin that we click open the Explorer tab, just pin that open. The Explorer tab shows a geological model file structure which is all the digital objects that can be mapped on a 3D surface in Cyrovision. And the relevant ones here are discontinuities, which are here, and something else which I've added in previously for this model is uh, domains. Now domains in Cyrovision you can map them manually, uh, it's very simple, or you can import them as a DXF from another uh, source. So if I open the table view here, I click on domains, so these are all my domains, I've kept it simple with two different types throughout the, throughout the pit. Uh, so for each domain I can enter a rock density value and a pore pressure coefficient value, so that can vary across each domain of course. A later stage when we run the analysis we can also enter other geotechnical parameters such as uh, critical friction angles and uh, cohesion values for each of the structures that, that we analyze. So these are my domains, very simple model. Uh, another uh, feature that can be uh, added for the slope stability analysis is a pore pressure grid. So if I turn that on, if you see here I've just added, kept it very simple. I have a smattering of um, pore pressure core values. Um, scattered around the pit 
so we have a general idea of what the pore pressure is across the pit. So this can be imported as a simple text file, pore pressure grid. Another object that we can import into Cyrovision is uh, complex structures. Um, the All the structures here are mapped or considered as linear, but we can add uh, nonlinear uh, structures, complex or weary structures, uh, which can be mapped in other software and imported into Cyrovision as a DXF file. Okay, so let's just turn off the domains um, so we can see what we're doing. Uh, so we're ready to begin the analysis. So the first thing we do is this is simple. We right click on the analysis tab and create an analysis set. So we want to uh, anal analyze all the structures in the pit. So uh, I can create a filter to filter out the data, but in this case, we'll just work with the whole data set. So I'll create that set. So here we have uh, analysis set one. So we have discontinuities, domains, poor pressure grids, and everything that's being considered uh, and calculated when we do the slopes to build the analysis. So the next thing I want to do is generate orientation sets from the, the parent data set that I've got here. Um, orientation sets, I require those if I want to do uh, wedge analysis. I don't need to plot orientation sets if I'm just going to do polyhedral block analysis. So as I'm going to show you both, I will create some orientation sets. Select create orientation sets. Here I think we've got four orientation sets and we will include any outliers. Okay, so that gives me this quickly four orientation sets, each color coded red, green, blue, and dark cyan. So now I'm ready to uh, start my kinematic analysis. So right click on kinematic sets forms to build the analysis. So this is giving me the option to run either tetrahedral wedge analysis or polyhedral block analysis. So first up, I'm going to detect all wedges in the pit. So this compares my two orientation sets. I have four orientation sets here, but in this area that I'm interested in, it's predominantly uh, red and green. So I'm going to run my analysis between the red and green orientation sets. Uh, there is input values here where I can input cohesion values. Uh, for the structures in that set and critical friction angles. Uh, I can also select different persistence methods. So in this case, I'm going to assume that the uh, persistence of each of the structures is a maximum. So we'll take the, the largest persistence in that set and I'll apply that persistence to all the structures. Um, persistence is extremely important, um, how you select that. Uh, because that's what the software considers is the length of the size of each structure in the set. So obviously the larger you make those, the more chance they have to intersect and form a wedge. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to select the maximum value, uh, which is 206 meters. And I'll run that. And this quickly, it's uh, calculated there are five wedges in the pit. Uh, one of them, there's a classification here, one of them is classified as unstable. Now this is uh, where we've set up a factor of safety uh, by default of 1.1. Uh, so this wedge has a factor of safety of 0.77, so it's deemed unstable. Uh, the other four wedges are stable with friction. Uh, their, their factor of safety is 1.2, 2.6, 3.15. Uh, so at the moment they're considered stable, then we've got one unstable wedge here. So hit next finish and it maps all my wedges for me. Now it maps the tetrahedrons uh, of the wedges you can see here in blue. Uh, they are that size initially uh, so you can visualize them so you can see them but also it's based on the maximum persistence uh, when it was mapped. So these release surfaces up here are obviously not realistic. Um, so what we'll do is I'll open up the table view which gives us a list of our, of our uh, wedges. Um, we'll find the one which is unstable, which is this one. And realistically, um, the release surface is obviously not here. So I would drag this down uh, to where I think uh, the wedge does extend to. So we'll say to the top of the, the pit wall we've got. And when I do that, it redraws the wedge. And in the table view here, uh, when I select that wedge, uh, I have data such as uh, the f factor safety, the mass, the volume, the dip, the dip direction of the plane of intersection, and the persistence of the two structures which intersect to form the wedge. So that is how quick and easy it is to detect potentially unstable wedges in the rock wall. Uh, so now we want to do something a little bit more advanced. Uh, instead of 
uh, detecting uh, where two planes intersect to form a wedge, we will run polyhedral block analysis. Uh, so to begin that, we right-click in kinematic sets, perform stability analysis to open the wizard, select polyhedral block analysis, and this is a similar wizard to the to the wedge uh, detection wizard. So we can import cohesion values, uh, critical friction ang angles, and persistence methods. So again, we'll use the maximum. Um, cohesion being set at zero, the cohesion actually relates to the uh, the plane boundary, or the, the where the two, where a number of uh, structures intersect. Uh, so that value of zero is, is uh, extremely uh, conservative. Um, uh, so, but for the interest of demonstrating some blocks, we'll, we'll keep it at zero. So let's hit next. And while it's doing this calculation, it's considering the pore pressure and the domain uh, characteristics and the any complex structures and a range of other things. So like the wedge analysis, it's detected a number of uh, stable blocks and unstable blocks. These are unstable blocks uh, to here. So again, we have mass, volume, dip and dip direction, which is a sliding vector, the dip and dip direction of the sliding vector of that block. Next. So now I've mapped all the stable and unstable blocks in the pit. So in order to see that a little bit easier, I'll just turn off the orientation sets and turn on the blocks. So now I can see uh, I have red and green blocks here in this case. So uh, red uh, for unstable, green for stable. There's also amber if it's stable with friction. In this case, we don't have any of those. So I can remove the, the stable blocks if we're not interested in those by clicking the show kinematically free blocks. So now I've got my, my red blocks, which are the marked as uh, unstable. So clicking on individual of those, I can see the mass and volume and slide and vector of these of these blocks. So that's the the very top level mean functionality in the slope stability analysis tool in Cyrogen 6. The the point I'm trying to get across here, the two major things is that with Cyrogen now we can work with large uh, 3D models and do analysis on large scale models. Uh, and our workflow is that we build the model, we come in and we map our structures. Uh, when we map our structures, we create analysis sets. In this case, we built orientation sets uh, here. And then once we have our orientation sets, we can run our kinematic analysis. So we did our wedge analysis to detect all the unstable and stable wedges in the pit, only the ones at daylight. And we can also do our block analysis. So the power here is that we it's very quick and easy to detect most unstable features uh, in large areas of, of 3D model. And lastly, Cyrovision includes uh, other more standard analysis tools such as steroplot analysis, rose plot analysis, and a whole range of other, other functions. Uh, if you are interested in a, a demonstration of the software, please make contact uh, with your regional uh, data mine office. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching.